Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and I thought you might benefit from a little humor today. So I, I thought a great way to do that would be to review a, st a study that, was, that received widespread media attention at the end of July, which uh, essentially said that tanning beds were as dangerous as arsenic. And I think part of the reason it got such widespread exposure, it was it, this recommendation came out of a group called the IARC, the International Agency for the Research for Cancer, which most people don't realize is a subset of the World Health Organization. And we know how accurate the World Health Organization is because we've seen what they've done with the pandemic and swine flu, don't we? So they decided to, to put these recommendations out for tanning beds. So what they essentially did is classify a tanning bed and, by the way, sunlight as a class one carcinogen. So what else is a class one carcinogen? Arsenic, mustard gas, radon, plutonium. So the, they've, they've got sunlight and tanning beds in the same group as these other well-known documented risks to health. Now, it, it's just shockingly crazy that they can come up with these solutions. But what's even worse, if you go and read their conclusions, they recommend that as an alternative to tanning beds or sun exposure, that you slather on chemical solutions to give you the appearance of being tan. So fake it. And now, if these solutions weren't necessarily harmful, then I guess it's just a cosmetic from Corona. But we know that they're loaded with chemicals that are they're absorbing your skin. Because anytime you rub something on your skin, it's going to go straight into your bloodstream. And it's going to increase the risk of a whole other variety of, of, of diseases and complications that we don't even know most of them. So it's just a bunch of crazy nonsense. But I thought it would also be good to give you, to, to, to sort of uh, um, dissect this study, to give you the understanding so how of how you can do this for future craziness that you'll appear in the mirror. Because believe me, this is not, this wasn't the first and this is not going to be the last time that they're going to try to deceive and manipulate you with craziness. And, and the, the, really the first clue is if, if, if it violates all, every bit of common sense, that's got to set up the red lights flashing war, a, alarm signals. And to, to, to say that sunlight is as dangerous as mustard gas is certainly a good step in that d direction. So, one of the ways that you can dissect this, I've written a whole big article on this, so just read the rest of this. It's eight or nine pages. But I want to highlight some of them. One of the simple ways that you can do that is to examine the original research. And that's exactly what I did. If you, if you look at uh, the media, you'll see that it was published in the, the online pediatrics journal. And you can go out there online and you can get a copy of this. And um, you can, in some cases, you can either do this for free at a medical library or if you have to pay for it online. So if you do that, you'll find that they, this study that received, supposed study that received widespread media attention was not a study at all. It was just a, 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 a bunch of people who got together, these experts. They met over in Europe and they reviewed studies. They didn't do any independent research. They reviewed other earlier research. So then if you go to the research that they based their recommendation on, it was actually published two years ago. And, and, and there's a link to that on, on this page. If you go to that article, you'll find that their recommendation came from another study that was published. So all of this is going back, it's two generations already. And then when, once you get to that study, you'll see that the very first line of that study was that sunlight is a known and dangerous carcinogen. So you can see that there is clearly, clear, obvious bias and prejudice in the whole study, and it wasn't really a study. Even that one was what's called a meta-analysis. In other words, they reviewed other previous studies. So I, if you get to this original one, which, which basically is the basis and the foundation for all these recommendations, you'll find there's some very interesting elements of this. And one of them is that they never once admitted or even recognized, because when this original study was done, it wasn't even known. Most of what we know about vitamin D was just really known within the last five to ten years, that they had no indication that, that exposure to sunlight actually has benefit and doesn't have some benefit. It has enormous benefit, enough so that we know that if you get regular sun exposure and a safe sun exposure and 
you optimize your vitamin D levels, you will reduce your risk of cancer by 50 to 60%. That's all cancers, breast, cancer, prostate, uh, lung. So these, uh, these are the ones that cancers are killing people. Skin cancer, for the most part, does not kill people. Let me give you a perspective here. If people do die from skin cancer, there's no question about it. We're not saying uh, unlimited cr crazy exposure to the sun is wise. You want to have a, a, a prudent exposure. So you, you never want to get sunburned. You want to avoid it. You want to be careful. Uh, but if, if for whatever reason you didn't do that and you got an excessive exposure and you did die from cancer, that will happen even though your, your vitamin D levels will go up. But you have to put this in perspective. For every person that dies from a skin cancer related to excessive sun exposure, you have over 200 people dying from cancers they, because they didn't have enough vitamin D. So what's the risk? One person dying or 200? So, you know, it, it, most of us drive and we have no problems going in our car and going to work or going to the office or to the grocery store. And we accept that risk because, you know, some crazy person could be texting and you, you and your family could be dead. Uh, it's clearly a risk. Le uh, but yet we take it. And, and just... Um, like when we can mitigate against that risk, we can wear our seat belts, we can make sure that we have um, airbags, side airbags, and drive a safe vehicle, and drive safely, and don't drink, and don't text when we drive. So we can mitigate that risk. And just similarly, we can mitigate the risk when we expose ourselves to sunshine. You never, as I said, you never want to get sunburned. If you have a very light color skin, you might only be, need to be in the sun for a few minutes. So if you follow these rules, I believe that you can virtually eliminate almost all the risk for cancer. Uh, by, by, by crazy exposure to the sun. So they didn't address that at all. They had no perspective. And that, so that was one. Additionally, they went in there and they, they, th there was never a study, a definitive study, that actually reviewed the evidence that, that, that specifically was designed to look at this issue. There wasn't one. One wasn't done. They just made these guesses based on epidemiological observations and these, this, what's called this meta-analysis review. So that, that was a big issue. So, you know, the, the uh, other factors that I, I really want to address was related to the fact that the tanning beds that were being used were emitting radiation that, in fact, were, were not necessarily related to what the investigators were looking at. They were looking at the ultraviolet radiation. But what, what they didn't examine was the EMF, the electromagnetic fields that were generated from the magnetic ballast in the tanning beds themselves, because most of these studies were done law, uh, many, many years ago, prior to the introduction of electronic balance, which essentially don't emit EMFs. So it was a variable they never considered. And that the EMFs produced by the magnetic balance were most likely contributing to any harm or danger or damage that they were observing. It was never even looked at. So. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to use a tanning bed, as I've said time and time again, you want to make sure it's a safe tanning bed, a tanning bed that uses electronic ballast because those, those dangerous magnetic ballasts, the ones that generate that high-pitched buzz and hum that you hear when you go to some tanning salons, are clearly ones you want to avoid. So, you know, the bottom line is, is that uh, if you hear something extraordinary and this violates every bit of common sense in the media, you want to carefully look at the, uh, the details because usually it, the devil's in the details and you're going to find out really obvious reasons why someone can come, why some group can come up with such an outrageous uh, claim like they made that's, that they put, actually put sunlight in the same category as for risk for cancer as arsenic and plutonium and radon. So hopefully this is helpful, give you some tools to help you protect you and your family from the deception, the fraud, the manipulation that's going to be regularly uh, inflicted upon you by uh, these, uh, these agencies and these corporations that really do not have your, you and your family's best health interests in mind.